Hi, I'm Jeremy, the Community Manager at HyperTrack, and today we're going to be talking about how you can integrate location tracking of service visits into your Android application. Forward-thinking services businesses around the world are digitally connecting freelance and in-house service professionals with local consumers. Services like home health care, beauty, auto mechanics, laundry, cleaning services, handymen, pickup and delivery services are booked with the tap of a button and serviced by professionals who often use an app to manage those visits. Live location of such service professionals can be used to assign jobs based on location, track the visit, measure productivity, share location with customers for a better product experience, and track miles for expense management. Service aggregators around the world and across industries use HyperTrack to build live location use cases. And so today we're going to go through how you can build the following tracking widgets, uh, that can integrate with your customer service and operating dashboards to give you a live view, um, live visit tracking experiences that integrate with your product experience, location-based assignment of jobs to the nearest available service professionals, and mileage tracking for expense management and logging of routes traveled. For reference, all the links that we mentioned in this video will be included down in the video description. So let's get started. We do need to sign up and then install the HyperTrack Android SDK. So on our HyperTrack webpage at hypertrack.com, you can click the sign up in the menu, or you can click the set up your free dashboard link. That will take you to a page like this. Once you've gone ahead and signed up uh, and gone through the verification process, you'll be on the dashboard. Inside the dashboard, there's a link for Quick Start. And if you choose Android, it's going to take us over to our documents reference site that will link and provide the information that you need in order to add that to your application. Uh, we will go ahead and uh, pause it, go ahead and pause the video and come back once you've done that. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial. We're going to be going through six steps using an example Android application we've made available for you to follow along with and even fork and use as a base for your own implementation. It's open source and you can do with it what you want. You can find it out here at github.com slash hypertrack slash service hyphen visit hyphen example hyphen Android. Uh, and again, that link will be in the description of the video. Um, once we've cloned this repo to our local machine, we're going to use Android Studio to edit and run the code. Uh, you are welcome to use whatever IDE you prefer, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to be using Android Studio. Step one is handling authentication and creation of a user or a driver. So to authenticate to HyperTrack, we will need to make sure we have our API key entered. You can get that from the dashboard. and Go to Settings, then you go to Account, and make sure to copy the publishable key here uh, and not the secret key. So we will click the Show, we'll take the publishable key here, and then we're going to copy it into our application. And so in this case, we've put it into our example app application. And you're going to replace the text that shows up as your publishable key here. And instead, you're going to put in your uh, publishable key and close it with quotes. So once we've done that, uh, we will need to set up the user in the application. This could happen when the service professional logs into the app. Um, you know, or, or it could be done at the beginning of a day uh, with the alarm manager. So in this instance, we're going to do it in uh, our sample app. We do it within our login activity. And so within the login activity, uh, let's go up to the spot. So once we've set up that page over here, we can see here's the login. Uh, we're going to have it um, look for. All right. So this this piece here is it's going to attempt the driver login. And we grab the user's name and phone number and use the lookup ID, which we're going to reference la later as the phone number. And that's kind of mentioned down in this spot here. Uh, we're grabbing the, the name, the phone number, and the lookup ID, which for our purposes, we're going to go ahead and just use the uh, phone number. So I'm going to put my name in here. I'm going to have a fake number. Click login. It's going to ask me to verify, um, allow access to the device's location, which we definitely want to do. Click allow, it's going to log us in. Now we're set. We're ready to start going here. So 
Um, once we've set up our login process, we can move to step two and start tracking. So after the user starts logging in, to, uh, we need to tell the HyperTrack SDK to start the tracking process. So we do that in also in uh, as part of the login activity. There's the on driver login success. So once we've actually logged in success, we have um, a line here that says HyperTrack start tracking. Uh, you could also use Alarm Manager to call this method at a predetermined time each day, like I already mentioned, say at you know 7 a.m. Uh, you can keep this SDK on throughout the day. No need to worry about the battery as we've optimized our SDK to use only 5 to 10 milliamps per hour of tracking. Uh, so once you've added this type of, of function in here uh, to um, start the tracking once they've logged in, for every service visit, that you want to track, you need to create and assign a visit action to the service professional by calling the create and assign method when assigning the service visit. So if your workflow requires that the service professional accepts a visit before confirming or starting the visit, you're going to call this method when you tap the accept button over here. So you can see the sample application doing this in the main activity, which in uh, down here. All right, so starting here, uh, we're going to create actions for the job. And so we have an order ID that gets passed in. Uh, we're using an order ID which maps to the current job being performed. So when we hit accept job, it's going to go out there. It's going to identify what our uh, location is and it's going to set uh, a visit. Uh, we're using an order ID, like I mentioned, which maps to that current job being performed. And then we're identifying the expected place for the service visit then setting up the different parameters for the action. So all of that's happening in here. And then we go and create and assign an action in line 174 here. When calling that method, we're requesting back a tracking URL and for that action. This tracking URL can then be shared with the customer or via your customer app. Uh, the URL is going to look something similar to this track.at URL, which is the tracking view, which allows you to see live tracking, if still proceeding, or the historical view of that track. If you want to track if the service professional was at the expected location throughout the duration of their visit, along with the location where the service was marked complete, you can do so with a stopover action, which you call at the exact same time that you're performing the actual action. So that's found uh, line 195 is when we do that. We assign the stopover action for the job. And then further down here, we've set the assigned stopover action for job that it's calling. And again, we're setting up that action. Okay. Uh, you're also able to have a tracking widget specifically to the lookup ID, which integrates with your customer service and operations dashboard. Uh, when you would embed that URL, you'll see it come alive which will display the assignments and actions which took place along with the ability to replay the action. So you can see here. All right, so in step four, once the service professional confirms that they have reached a location, when they tap the start job button, the job is now started you need to call the, call the complete action method for that visit action. So line 113 up here shows us that when we tap that visit action, it's going to say complete action for the visit I action ID we had started. Now that they've arrived at their location, we're, we will have mileage tracking available. Calling that mileage I API for this location, uh, this action will get accurate distance traveled from the time when that action was assigned to them and when the time that they reached the service place. You can find that information over our documentation where it'd be a meter, metering the action. And again, the link directly to this is also in the description below. All right, so in step five, and once the service professional has confirmed that they have completed the visit by tapping close job, job close successfully, we need to call the complete action method for that stopover action. So in line 135, again, there's stopover action, complete action. 
once we've done that, we've now logged the routes traveled by the service professional, and you can replay that entire service visit and any others with the corresponding lookup ID from assignment to the start and end of visit at any time in the future. So again, similar to what we had before with the lookup ID and replaying the activity, we're going to go ahead and show that here again. And we'll go ahead and speed it up a little bit so we can kind of see exactly what's happening. So you see it goes through. We can see how it progresses through the activity. You can see their little stopovers, trips. You can see where they complete the delivery. And there. So this will always be available with the lookup ID. In our final step, we need to make sure that we've stopped the tracking itself. We use the stop tracking method and call it when they log out of the app or by using alarm manager to call it at a predetermined time again, time of day, so say 9 p.m. every day. In our sample app, we have it in the main activity when the logout option is tapped. So down here at the bottom, on logout clicked, tells us logout successful and it stops tracking. Okay, so we have now successfully built live visit tracking widgets for use in your dashboard, live tracking experiences to integrate into your product experience for yourselves and your customers, created location-based assignment of jobs, and now they have the ability to track mileage for expense management and logging of routes traveled. So just in a few steps, you're able to track live location of your service professionals. We're excited to see what live location features you build into your product, so please let us know at help at hypertrack.io once you've built your own, and we would love to feature your app on our blog. Subscribe to our channel to be notified of future visited videos. Visit the links in our description to circle back to what we've gone over. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Hypertrack, and let us know your comments below. And again, all of the links that we've just gone over are going to be in the description. Thanks.